Hello everyone and welcome back to Non Sequitur Nerds. Tonight we're going to need you to be the one who observes but never interferes. As we are doing a special What If episode in honor of Marvel launching their new show this week called What If. Uh, I'm Tim, joining me as always is Ian. How's it going buddy? Hey everybody. Uh, things are going pretty good here. Uh, it's uh, quiet in the old household tonight. I've managed to... Uh, divest myself of the children and the dog for the evening, so well, I finally uh, don't have uh, not obligated to entertain something roly-poly in my house. <laughs> Except the cat behind you. Well, yes, the, the fat cat. <laughs> well, He has no other existence than, than being roly-poly. That's what cats do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, what if episode tonight? Uh, the biggest what if uh, for us, of course, is what if this podcast was actually popular? <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's true. <laughs> uh, Self-deprecating humor. <laughs> it, it gets us through the day. Um, but I'm no, making some Amish people. Well, that too. Uh, I doubt there's any that listen to this podcast. If they do, they're probably, you know, sh you know, shunning us in church. But anyway... Well, uh, I mean, what they consider a podcast is probably, you know, like attaching a K-cup to the end of a fishing rod. <laughs> I mean probably but uh no uh so what if marvel's new show launched this week uh the basic premise of it is like the title says what if and it's what if this event would have happened differently or what if this character would have done something differently uh i won't spoil the first episode because i don't think ian's actually had a chance to watch it yet um if it came out this week highly unlikely yeah. my uh i don't know how it is with you your kids just started school this week right yes yes they did actually yeah so uh my kids started school last week mm -hmm. and Every single night, except for the weekends, like every night on during the weekdays, mm -hmm. I have had to go to some school function, like meet the teacher, tour the school, mm -hmm. or you know meet all of the teachers because my son is in seventh grade now, and oh, so like yep. he, you know, he's got like seven, eight, eight teachers. Well, technically, there's one class that's taught by two people, so I guess it's like nine teachers. All right. Anyway, uh, so yeah, he's I was going to meet everybody, and it's, it's just like oh. <laughs> I just want a night off. Right. Well, you've got it now, and I'm making you work. Um. <laughs> this isn't work. It's not work when you enjoy it. Yay, heart. Yay. <laughs> but yeah, so we uh, it's kind of a quasi-follow-up to our Versus episode. We're going to propose different what-if scenarios of you know different pop culture genres and kind of give our thoughts on how we think events would transpire. So uh, I think I went first in the Versus episode, so I will let you go first this time, Ian. Fair enough. Uh, <clears throat> so um, one of the, uh, the What If episodes, I uh, figured I would harken back to one of our favorite anime growing up. So uh, first What If scenario for you is, what do you think would have happened All right. if Goku hadn't been sent to Earth? Like if, if he would have just stayed on Planet Vegeta? Well, that would have been a very short series. Um. <laughs> well, it would have, but the the point being is he is he is not he was never sent to Earth. Ergo, he never got clocked in the head by a tree branch and right. never became a good Saiyan. Because if you anybody remembers the original Dragon Ball, the kid was a dick before he fell yeah. out of a tree and hit his head. Yep, lost all his memories. Lost all his memories and his violent ten well. Malicious, malicious, violent, yeah, violent tendencies. Well, it's it's that aside. Apart from obviously Goku not being you know on Earth, you know Vegeta and Nappa and Raditz, they would have never came to Earth. So in theory, all three of those guys would still be running around in space somewhere. Um, Raditz would still be alive. Nappa would still be alive. Um, I mean, Vegeta would probably still hold that grudge against Frieza. But, but with, would he though? Because the reason I say that mm. is if Goku never left planet Vegeta, would Bardock have a reason to oppose Frieza? Well, I mean, I, I think depends on which version of Bardock you go off of. Cause the, the original Bardock movie, you know, he had a lot more of those, those visions and everything that told him the future. So he wouldn't have that, that sense of, you know, my son's going to be the one to stop this, but he still would have seen, you know, Frieza betraying the Saiyans. Um, Assuming that he still did that. I mean, that's, that's true. 
Um, I mean, they kind of retconned that in by introducing yeah. Beer- by introducing Beerus, and you know, Beerus is the one that told Frieza to destroy. Right. So, like, I, I planet I, planet Vegeta. I, I imagine then that Frieza still would have destroyed the planet. Nappa would have still been with Vegeta at that point. Raditz was. Maybe he would have had more hair. Well, I think like originally he had that little tuft of hair because I mean he's he's an older Saiyan. Um, I think they they ret- if I remember right they retcon that's why he doesn't have hair is because he he did eventually just go bald. Um, <laughs> but uh, Raditz was off planet, but obviously they would have had no reason to go to Earth at all. Um, I think the, the Red Ribbon Army probably would have like conquered everything because there wasn't. Apart from Roshi, there wasn't really anybody who was strong enough or had the... Well, I don't know. King Piccolo probably would have given them a run for their money. I mean, without Goku there, a lot of stuff... I mean, I think Red Ribbon would have taken over uh, uh, initially. King Piccolo would have came in and just wiped the floor with them. So you would see Piccolo, original Piccolo taking over, you know, Earth effectively, making it his kingdom, ruling with an iron fist. That's also assuming that the, uh, that the Red Ribbon Army is, fails to collect the Dragon Balls. That is true, and, that is true. And, uh, and Emperor Pilaf making his wish. That's true. Uh, so, I mean, a lot so, of things there would have definitely turned out differently without Goku on Earth. But, like, like putting Earth aside, because that, that's a whole other, a whole other episode we could do on just that. Um... Goku would have been on planet Vegeta when it was destroyed, more than likely. Unless they sent him to a different planet. In which case, if he wouldn't have hit his head, you know, because that was his whole purpose, is they were going to send him to a planet. Well, in in the original version, they were sending him, you know, to Earth to, to save him, and it was a low power level planet. He would have been able to conquer it and, you know, get retrieved later in life. So assuming the same thing, assuming that, for whatever reason, Earth didn't show up on their radar... They would have sent him to the next, you know, weakest planet. He would conquer it. Raditz would come by, retrieve him, take him back to wherever, you know, Frieza has his home base set up. Like, hey, we got another Saiyan here to, you know, join your ranks and whatnot, begrudgingly. So, I mean, you, right. would, have, you would have had Goku as a planet conqueror. He wouldn't be nearly as strong. It, it Without knowing what random planet they were sending him to, I don't think he would be nearly as strong as he is, or as he was when he first met Raditz. Because of all the stuff he went through in the original Dragon Ball, he had a lot of power level increases. He wouldn't know a lot of his most famous attacks. He wouldn't know the Kamehameha. He wouldn't know Solar Flare. He wouldn't know, you know, any of the other techniques that he stole from everybody else. Um, and even past that, he would have never learned Kaioken. Man, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that would change. Um, yeah, my, I mean, if you also think about it, the the future state the future that that trunks comes from wouldn't exist because Mm -hmm. without goku they can't make cell and they have no reason to make cell because there's trunks wouldn't exist because vegeta had no reason to go to earth and eventually meet bulma correct but my my point being though is yeah that he wouldn't exist period but neither would cell because Mm -hmm. there's no goku to to get the dna from right uh, to make cell, there would be no reason for Doctor Giro to make the androids, right? Well, I mean, because he, he made like some in the original Dragon Ball, but like specifically Android 16, 16 through twenty, and and twenty one, they would have they've never existed. I mean, Giro may have still Did turned. They him... make twenty canon, I thought, or twenty one canon. I thought that was just from or, the that was just the, from, the, uh, from a movie, yeah. Or um, no, because it's like female Boo, like weird. Oh yeah, yeah, she, uh, she's canon as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> uh, somebody, somebody's a simp. <laughs> I simp for her. Um, but no, uh, I think Jiro still would have turned himself into an android. Not because he has anybody to fight against, but so he could continue his research for, effectively, forever. True. He could continue that's, that's being, true. you know, next to Dr. Briefs, the second smartest man on the planet. Right. Although, to be f- completely fair... Mm. They're not actually androids; they're cyborgs. I mean, but, yeah, you know. But still, by if we're going by traditional <laughs> science fiction definition, they are not androids. They they're cyborgs, same. exactly. Yes. Um, uh, so, because um, they do contain biological parts. Correct. Yep. Uh, so, um, in, in that same vein, though, as well, there would also 
probably not be a Majin Buu. There would still be. He a, would exist. Yeah, but I, I don't exist. I don't. But I don't he think he would have never would, uh, gotten reawakened. Uh, well, who was it? Was it? It was Bobbity, right? Yeah, B- Bibbity was the. Bibbity was first, his dad. Yeah, Bobbity was, was the junior. Yep. Was it's the junior? Bibbity, right. Bobbity, Boo. Right. Yep. Bobbity wouldn't have had a reason to awaken Boo. Mm. So. I mean, he, I mean he's, Earth would... he still could have and used Boo as a conquering mechanic, which I mean could be interesting because if, if you know there's still a few you know, a few more Saiyans running around, you'd think that you know if, if Boo was conquering planets you know for Bobbity or, or eventually on his own, uh, if that stays true to course, then uh, eventually you think the Saiyans would come across him and there, it wouldn't even be a contest, because I mean they're no and yeah. frankly I mean. Boo, if you go by power level mechanics, Boo would wipe the floor with Frieza. Oh, easily. oh, easily, yeah. Like Frieza, Cooler, King Cold, like he would just mulch them. Yeah. There's no contest there. I mean, um, but there, there's always another. I don't know what we call him, a plot device character. Broly. I mean, there's always some. Even Broly. Yep. Because <laughs> I mean, because Broly reference. I, exactly. I mean, because Broly is canon, so I mean. Now, and now, yeah, movie. now, yeah, which was with ma- the latest movie, he is now canon. Yep. So I mean, I don't know if, if I don't know if they would have ever actually met Broly then, because if, if if Goku would have never gone to Earth, he would have never eventually fought Frieza, would have never killed Frieza, they would have never had to re- find his body. Frieza would have had no reason to actually train to get better because he always was better. Yeah. So, I don't know, unless they still picked up that distress signal on accident, they might not have ever met Brawly. But, I mean, if they still picked up that distress signal for from traveling, you know, planet to planet conquering it, that would be a very strong trump card in Freeze's arsenal. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean assuming that, you know, I mean, uh, Broly's hyper-aggressive tendencies wouldn't cause him to immediately just forehead flick a yeah. Frieza into oblivion. Well, I mean, and even even if his, his dad still held that grudge against the Vegeta family and sent Broly at Vegeta, the one hit and Vegeta's gone at that point. Because, again, he would have never had the, the situations pop up that would have led him to become as strong as he was. I, I mean, he'd, I, he'd I, probably be... I imagine... Yeah. Go ahead. I, I imagine it much like the scene from uh, Helsing Ultimate where the uh, wild geese first meet Ceres and she just, like, flicks uh, Pip in the head. <laughs> right. And just, like, sends him literally across the room. Like, that that's pretty much what it would be. Yeah. Which, except, except Vegeta's head would explode. Yeah. Like, I, I imagine that, like, you know, Vegeta and all the other Saiyans that would be alive at that point would still be strong. I mean, they'd probably, you know, from a few fights here and there, training here and there. They would have, you know, their power levels would have gone up a bit, but not to the level that they were in the Broly movie. Nowhere even close to that, because they wouldn't have had the god training. I mean, they wouldn't have... Literally, it was the experiences of, you know, Dragon Ball all the way through Super. All of those experiences made them as strong as they are, and without those experiences, yeah, they'd, they'd still be some of the strongest fighters in that universe, but nowhere near the level that we see them. So, I mean, it, it would have been... Goku pretty much would have been a non-player because he was a low-class Saiyan, and without those experiences, and without you know him being who he was in you know Dragon Ball and in Z, you mean constantly dying? Well, co- I mean you're constantly dying, constantly getting the crap beat out of him to come back stronger. Yes, because for those of you that don't know, that is the Deus Ex Machina of Dragon Ball. Uh, that is how they explain uh, Super Saiyans get or er, Saiyans themselves getting stronger. If they get the shit beaten out of them to to the point of almost death they gain a massive power boost. So that's why you see the Saiyan characters get the ever-loving crap kicked out of them, mm-hmm. they eat a sensu bean, and then they can come back to life, you know, they come back and just whoop the, then mop the floor with them. Yeah. Because whenever they be, whenever they hit almost near death, they just gain a power boost, which really begs the question of, why couldn't they have just, like, sat in the hyperbolic time chamber and just, like, literally nuked each other with energy <laughs> blasts and fed each other sensu beans until they literally became gods? Because that's the easy way. Given who Goku and Vegeta are, they wouldn't do the easy way. Muffin button. <laughs> exactly, muffin button. But yeah, it would it would have been a vastly different series then. I mean, you'd have, you know, the characters that were, you know, god-tier who would be mid-tier at best, honestly. Yeah. 
So. I mean, it, there. It kind of begs the question, like you know, if Goku didn't exist, Goku was like the or didn't exist on Earth. He was the 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 central character in all of it and yeah. brought all the other characters together. Mm -hmm. Bulma probably wouldn't have never met Roshi or Krillin mm -hmm. or Yamcha. Mm -hmm. Not that anybody cares. Oh, or, or uh, Yamcha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a Yamcha is, but it sounds disappointing. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Quack. Oh, the majestic space duck. Beautiful creature. <laughs> and that's how I became the most sought-after woman on my planet. That thing's a woman? <laughs> Thank you. know, you guys don't know what we're talking about, Tech, check yeah. out uh, DBZ Abridged by Team Four Star on YouTube. <sighs> absolutely hilarious. Oh, absolutely uh, we hilarious. We plug them even though they're not making up stuff anymore. I know. It's still so, it's their, their DBZ Abridged stuff is some of the best comedy you will see. Um, Correct. They actually even took one of their jokes and put it into uh, DBZ Kai. Oh, which nice. Was the, yes, which was the uh, uh, Roshi going, what? I'm sorry, speak up. I'm not wearing pads. <laughs> they actually did that I, in Kai? Yes. Oh, that, that's that was awesome. In, that's canon in Kai. That is awesome. Like that, that scene, they, they redubbed it, and so it, it's actually it's Roshi going, I'm sorry, speak up. I'm not wearing pads. That's, that is amazing. And that's one of your yeah. favorite jokes from that, too. Well, yes, because it's applicable everywhere, and I'm never wearing pants, so it works out. I mean, that's true. That's why we record from the neck, you know, from the midsection up. Just saying. Um, but so yeah, it's it's Z, uh, Dragon Ball would have been vastly different without Goku on Earth, because yeah, like you said, your cat just like spazzed out. Um, well, it's yay, uh, probably Yumi o'clock. Exactly. Right. Um, but yeah, like the Z fighters would have like Shoutsu and Tien. Obviously, they still would have been partners. Um, He's his protector. All right, let's not make it weird, everybody. Um, Yamcha would have <laughs> Yamcha would have still been, you know, doing his bandit stuff in the desert with uh, uh, Puar. Um, <laughs> I know we're both watching your cat now <laughs> with a giant poofy tail. I'm sorry, you guys can't see the cat. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, he it, he's a an all black, eighteen pound fat ass, and it's Zumi o'clock, so. He is poofed up to about as big as he can get uh, and just bolting around the house <laughs> because. Because. It's, anyway. It's Zoomy o'clock. But yeah, the anyway. Z Fighters would have never been a thing. Um, Roshi would probably still be just living on his island in solitude. Now that begs the question, like, Bulma would have started her quest for the Dragon Balls. So she probably still would have met Roshi. Because I mean, you uh, can, you, I mean, you can take Goku out of that story, and she theoretically. But did yeah. Roshi ever have a Dragon Ball? Because it was yeah. Goku that had the. It was Goku that had the Dragon Ball, or he, had a Dragon. Ball. Well, I was gonna say he had one of them, which probably Grandpa Gohan would have had it. So she would have had to convince him to give her give uh, that first one, because Grandpa Gohan's the one that gave it to Goku. Right. So Grandpa Gohan had it at one point. Roshi had one. Remember that was the infamous Bulma, you know, flashing uh, Roshi scene. To get the yes. Dragon Ball. So she probably would have met Roshi, and that would have been the end of that. She wouldn't really have any more reason to interact with him. I'd like to imagine, giving her, given her tenacity, she probably would have gathered at least a good couple of them before Pilaf and all of them stepped in, because th there's not much Bulma can do, you know, against some, something like that, or, you know, let alone uh, any of the other enemies they fought in uh, Dragon Ball. There's not a whole lot she can do. So she probably would have... saying Bulma? Oh, gosh. Uh, so, I mean, she probably would have gathered a good couple of them, but I don't think she would have ever gotten all of them to, to make her, her wish for a perfect boyfriend. Right. So, yeah, it would have been, would have been vastly different. For sure, for sure. Something to ponder on. But, you know, things went the way that they did, mm -hmm. and Bulma did wind up with the perfect boyfriend. Vegeta. Yes, because we all know that Vegeta is really the best character in that series. Yeah, dude, it's 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 such a shame that even in Super, like, they make you think that hey, you know, we're gonna we're gonna elevate Vegeta, we're gonna make him you know more front and center. And while he is a lot of the times, he's still second fiddle. And I get it. Goku is the main character. He's always gonna be the strongest. He's always gonna be the best. Give Vegeta more than like thirty seconds of but doing he's something such better. A but he's such a two-dimensional character, though. I mean, well, like, like Vegeta, Vegeta has, at least has nuance. Yeah, he's, he's got he's redemption. had character development. Goku has been, yeah. I'm a punch it in the schnoz. Right. 
And let's not forget Vegeta's best moment. Bingo! Exactly! I mean, he's like, yeah, the bingo dance is perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Vegeta <sighs> loves his wife mm-hmm. so much that he literally humiliated himself in front of a god yep. in order to make to keep her safe. Yeah. The the e- the egotistical narcissistic prince of Saiyans. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But All yeah. right. So what's your what's your your what if? Okay. Well, well harkening back to since you're harkening back to one of our favorite childhood animes, I will harken back to one of our favorite childhood video games. What if Cloud would have left Avalanche after that first bombing? Hmm. Well, all things considering, which is I- interesting because I l- literally mm, two nights ago just finished the um, uh, Mako Reactor level in uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Okay. Uh, so, you know, like, I'm slowly picking through it, but <laughs> anyway. Um, which the Scorpion tank thing sucks. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> um, if he left avalanche after the the first bombing i mean he really wouldn't have any reason to he wouldn't have met eris Mm -hmm. which means that likely the shinra company would have been able to successfully kidnap her Mm -hmm. and take her and then it really would have been sephiroth off doing his thing his sephirothy stuff (laughs) right like i mean his whole shtick is you know getting genova and attacking, you know, like, murdering the planet. So, I don't know that... I don't know that anything would have, like... Yeah, uh, none of the... Cloud, again, is kind of like that centralized character. He's the glue behind all of it. uh, Kind of the driving force. Um, Without him, really, the whole thing would have fallen apart. Mm. In reality, then, you know, that said, depending on how things played out, you could argue that, you know, Avalanche either would have failed in their next bombing and all been killed, mm-hmm. or maybe would have broken up. Um, it's, um, yeah, that's interesting. But, I mean, without, uh, without, without Cloud meeting Eris, though, you know, Barrett's daughter would have died, like, she wouldn't have been saved. Right. So there, there's a whole cascading chain of events. I mean, Red 13 probably would have been turned into, like, a weird sludge beast thing in the labs. Right. Oh, yeah, they'd I didn't have even no... think about Red, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a whole myriad of... of there, there's a cascading effect of these characters changing their actions mm-hmm. um, that would have happened. And in this case, yeah, I, I don't... Obviously, the entire game would have been different. I think, uh, what's his name, um, Sephiroth would have succeeded in his yeah. goal to destroy the planet. And I can't actually remember what Shinra was wanting to do with Aerith, other than uh, she's to, she's an ancient. Yeah, but I don't used, remember they were what they use were going to do to find the Promised Land. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep. I think I think that's what they called it. Yeah, Shangri La or whatever the hell, yeah. you know, the Promised Land type thing. But yep. I mean, without that, I mean, without the interference of Cloud though, and and the rest of the team, mm-hmm. I mean, Sephiroth would have been able to just get a hold of Genova and then summon Meteor, and it would have been pretty much done and over with. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, because would would Cloud? I mean, without the experiences he had, he probably wouldn't know, you know, that Sephiroth is still around. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he's, um... I mean, do you think Cloud would have stayed there in Midgard, or do you think he would have gone to one of the other cities? It really kind of depends. Like, he's a merc, right? Like, yeah. so he would just would have... He would have gone where the work is. Right, so, I mean, he could have just picked up another contract in the the city. I mean, that maybe he picked up the gold something... saucer. Right, maybe yeah. he picked up something, you know, for, like, Don... Uh, Don... Corn... Corneo. Cornelia. Corneo, Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I could... He could been a bouncer at the honeybee or something, or like just just muscle to you know collect money. Yeah, I mean, so I, I mean, it, like like I mean, it's it's shown off pretty early that Cloud's really not that picky on his job. It's like, oh, you guys are eco terrorists, you're gonna blow up a macro reactor. 
or Mako reactor. All right, yeah, I'll, t I'll tag along for the money. So I mean, it seems like you know, being you know a collection thug wouldn't really be beneath him if he's willing to blow up people. Yeah, he's uh he's generally pretty apathetic, and yeah. it's really only only in his meeting of Aerith that he really kind of gains a uh, I don't know I wouldn't even call it conscious, but a Com purpose, compassion almost. I don't even know but, that but I would call it compassion. Se selective just... compassion. <laughs> yeah, selective compassion. He's, yeah. I mean, admittedly, he's, he's, you know, an ass. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it also begs the question of, you know, would Shinra really be able to succeed in their their plan to find the promised land, you know? Right. Or would Sephiroth have just, like, you know, black tornadoed in and stabby stabby and right everybody's well everybody's i mean gone. Aerith probably still would have lived um because she would have never been there you know spoiler alert if you guys haven't played seven at this point Aerith dies um i mean I, th I think we're out of the statutes of limitations uh if we're referring to the original seven anyway there's there's a lot of talk that the remake might play things differently but as far as like original seven goes yeah uh she would have still been alive you know locked up in Shinra somewhere or, you know, being carted around the planet until she finally found the promised land, whatever it is and however, however she goes about doing that. Um, right. Let's see. Vincent would still be in his casket in the basement. Oh man, I he, forgot about he, Vincent. How can you forget about Vincent? He's like the best character. Says every he's... 90s edgelord kid. <laughs> right. I mean, because he's moody with pointy boots and a three-barreled shotgun. And a Bitchin' cloak. Right. Don't forget about the cloak. The cloak's very important the, to his character arc. The, yes, the cloak is very important to his uh, to his character arc. Um, Vincent actually, in my original playthrough of Seven, wound up being my. Um, oh, I can't remember what the material was called. Was it mimic? Where or uh, uh, enemy enemy skill or something like yeah, that? Yeah, where yeah. You could learn. Yep. You could learn enemy attacks if they if they hit you. He wound up being like my enemy skill bitch. Uh, so you like know, I, I would I just think like I had him like that too actually. I would just send him in there and let him get like hit, like let him get marked by something so he could learn the skill and then go on. And it was actually pretty awesome because um, I took him into the fight with Ultima Weapon. Oh God! And Ultima Weapon used that like Giga Flare ability or whatever it does, mm -hmm. which you can learn. And Vincent <laughs> lived, so he learned it. Oh God. So yeah, that was just like my ace in the hole. Um, if if I ever you know, cause there's like um, there just randomly there's this like creature. It looks like a a sea like a sea mollusk or something that's mm. on a beach somewhere that knows one of the best like defensive spells, which is Big Guard. Yeah, because it te like it raises all of your resistances, like maxes out all of your resistances when you cast it. Yeah. So you just go and you just go and you cast reflect on one of them before it can do it. Yeah. And then you just wait for it to to cast big guard on itself and then it reflects back onto your party and you learn it. So that's not a better way to do it. Yeah, it's literally one of the the best defensive spell in the game and it's actually relatively cheap to cast. So anyway. There we go. Let's see yeah. who else. Um Barrett probably still would have been doing the avalanche thing, I'd like to think. Maybe not as big of a scale, because he didn't have that extra muscle with him. I mean, uh, a big... yeah. I mean, because he, he was pretty gung-ho about it. I mean, with, with, a, with a merc that he kind of was indifferent towards leaving anyway, he probably still would have done it, but, I mean, their plans probably would have changed. Um, let's see, Sid... Sid probably would have, wouldn't have gotten involved at all. Yeah, that would be um, my guess. Unless maybe if Shinra, like, recontracted him to make an airship or, or some form of... I mean, if they... He did have that, that spaceship that he was working on that, you know, didn't go. Right. So, I mean, maybe they would have, you know, hired him back on, hired him on to actually work on that again. Right, but I, but well, I mean, for part, the most part, I mean, unless that happened, I really don't see any reason that Sid would have gotten involved. I mean, Yuffie probably would have been, however you want to pronounce her name, Yuffie, Yuffie. I, I don't know. I, I've always called her Yuffie, and I'm going to stick to that. <laughs> um, she would. I mean, she really was only involved for materia theft. Yeah, like stealing materia, so she probably just would have been off doing her thing. Right. 
And, and then, of course, everybody forgets about um, the most useless party member of Kate Sith. Would have never um, even existed, because his whole point originally was to spy on them. Yeah. So, Kate Sith would have never even been a thing. Or Kite, Kite She, I think, is the, the Gaelic pronunciation, I think. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, Kate, Kate Sith. Everybody calls it Kate Sith. <laughs> yes. But yeah, they would have never existed even, because... I mean, unless they still would have gone through with that to spy on, like, Barrett's, you know, branch of Avalanche. But, I mean, if they're doing much lower-scale stuff, and without the extra firepower of Cloud and all the stuff that he drug them into with his backstory, I don't think... Yeah, I don't even think that Kate would have been a thing. Yeah. I mean, it would have been a vastly different... different universe, obviously. Oh, oh like, yes. I mean, in reality, we probably would have seen that... Excuse me. The destruction of the unit of that world. Oh, like, oh yeah. There would have been there would have been nothing to stop Sephiroth because really the only reason uh, that it took a little while for for Sephiroth to enact his plan is because Shinra built that giant cannon and tried to to shoot him with it. Right. Um, which in turn unleashed the weapon. The you know the different weapons. Right. You know the Ultima weapon, Ruby weapon, um, Emerald weapon. Mm-hmm. There was another one, wasn't there? Heart, heart gold, soul silver, red, blue, sun. Moon. I choose you, Deus Ex Machina. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so uh, I mean, like, if Sephiroth was still doing what he was doing, I mean, Shinra still would have had the drive to try to do something about him. But I mean, yeah. a lot of it was because of the stuff that was going on with Cloud and all of them. Yeah, but, I mean, President, the OG President Shinra probably wouldn't have died because there was no one, no one would have been raised, you know, raiding his tower, so Rufus wouldn't have taken over. Right. Unless he, you know, uh, Oedipus Rexed his dad. Um, right. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say. Cause, I mean, with, with Sephiroth stealing Genova... I mean, he might have still gone through and, like, you know, murked a few people here and there. He might have still gone after President Shinra. Hard, it's hard to say, yeah. With, without without the involvement of Cloud and all of them, you know, I mean, for one, we never would have gotten the awesome highway chase scene, um, which is so fun. Um, yeah, it would have been... The, the Fenrir been, cycle. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it would have been... A lot of the characters... Would have never gotten involved. Yeah, it would have been a vastly different story. I'm really the only two characters. The only two characters that would have. <laughs> right. I mean, the only the, the the only two characters that really would have known each other at that point are Tifa and Barrett. Right. Because and there's no guarantee yeah. that Tifa would stick around with Barrett. I mean, she's kind of got a thing for Cloud, so she might have right. just you know followed him off to wherever. Right. You know, the dynamic duo of, of Cloud and Tifa. Right. Or, I mean, or she might have stayed there at the bar, you know, doing her job and, you know, helping, you know, keep an eye on Marlene. Because if she leaves, you know, who's going to watch Marlene? Right. But, yeah, it, yeah, she, I could see that going either way. I mean, she could leave, but, I mean, at the same time, it was that, you know, like, childhood friendship thing of, oh, yeah, you know, we grew up together. But, I mean, he's leaving, and I haven't seen him in, you know, however many years. I've got a life here now. In my opinion, more than likely she would have stayed, you know, there in the slums. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, Cloud well, went off to live an uneventful life as a bouncer somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don Corneo's uh, 15th wife. Oh, God. Yeah, we never would have gotten the amazing cross-dressing scene. Um. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. So well, what do you got next, Ian? Um, what do I have next? So here's a here's a question for you for one of our favorite universes. Okay. And I'm sure this one has been explored quite a lot on the internet. You can probably go out and find 18 million theories, but whatever. I'm gonna have some fun here. <laughs> uh, so, um, Star Wars. Okay. What if scenario? What if Anakin had actually gone through with killing Palpatine? Uh, when they, uh, when he and Mace Windu attacked him, rather than turning on Mace Windu, because if because Windu wanted to just stop him and kill him right then and there. Correct, because okay. Mace Windu said he was too dangerous to be taken in alive, and then okay. that was where you know Palpatine kind of had that 
you know, persuasion and, you know, he mm-hmm. planted the seeds and things like that. And he, that was when Anakin, you know, turned on the Turn, Jedi. Yeah. I, okay. I think initially the Jedi would have been very pleased with this because, you know, between Windu and Anakin, they stopped the leader of the Sith. Yep. Now, now, given what these sequels say, Palpatine, well, that depends. If, if Palpatine hadn't started his plans for, you know, his resurrection and all that yet, that might have just been the end of Palpatine. So I, I'll go off of that train of thought, that Palpatine okay. hadn't started his plans for all the stuff that happened in the sequels yet. So I think initially the Jedi Order would have been very pleased with him. However, with him having fathered two children, which the Jedi at that time were very much against those kind of attachments and those kind of relationships, I think that initially they may have granted him the rank of Master, but disbarred, banished, whatever, him from the Jedi Order when they found out about Luke and Leia. Which I think still would have left let, let Anakin down the path of the dark side. Because he's now he finally got what he wanted. He he's finally a Jedi Master, and that's stripped from him. He I would think, I mean go ahead. I, I think he would have been I you you have a you have a point there, but at the same time he I mean his whole motivation for turning to the dark side was to save Padme. Right. If we go under the assumption that Padme, I mean, Padme, let's admit it, she died from a broken heart. Mm-hmm. That was why she died. Yep. If she didn't, if Anakin never betrayed, you know, betrayed her and the Jedi and mm-hmm. Obi-Wan and all of them, she would have never had a reason, you know, never would have had the broken heart. Right. She theoretically could have survived. Yeah. Let's go under the assumption that she survived. Mm-hmm. Had the children, Anakin still would have had his kids, mm-hmm. his wife, being the most powerful Force user in, in the universe. Right. Yeah, it would suck for him to be, you know, banished from the Jedi. But frankly, if we, if, you know, some of the extended universe stuff, I think maybe he would have, maybe he and Ahsoka would have, you know, got back together and, you know, for, you know, reformed that friendship and maybe they would have gone out and formed the Gray Order of Jedi. Ooh, I didn't, or, I didn't even or, think about that way. Hmm. You know, maybe they could have gone off and formed a gray, you know, a gray order of Jedi, or just traveled the universe, you know, being paragons of justice type thing. There's Anakin definitely has some dark components. Oh, to absolutely, him. absolutely. But I don't. I think with his family, that would have kept him in check. Mm-hmm. Because That's they, true, you know, they because Padme was kind of his voice of reason. And it wasn't yeah. up until he thought that she betrayed him that he lost that voice of reason. So with, without that betrayal, he may have initially been understandably angry. But like I think between between her and, and Obi-Wan at that point, who was still, you know, up until he killed the younglings, Obi-Wan was still very much on his side. And even, even after Obi-Wan found out that, you know, you're, you're going to be a father... He never threw that that part in Anakin's face, almost like he was accepting of it. So I, I th- mean, if you go by if you go by the some of the extended canon, like the Clone Wars cartoon, mm-hmm. Obi Wan knew, like he yeah. knew about Padme and Anakin's relationship. Yeah. But he was such a friend to him that he never said anything about it. He always kept it secret. I mean, they That's make it true, yeah. very clear in the last season. The, you know, the newest last mm. season of Clone Wars. They make it abundantly clear that Obi-Wan knows. Oh, yeah. Like, that, it's... that is true. So, I mean... Maybe the Jedi Order would have just never found out about the kids. I think they would have found out. It, it, I, I it, think eventually. There's... Well, I mean, especially, yeah, there's... Gi- especially given, like, Luke's, like, almost uh, from a young age, very close connection to the force they would have sensed luke and it's like so all right so where did you where did you find this kid exactly oh his name just happens to be skywalker yeah. um well and same thing hmm. leia would have been raised you know well that... leia would have Un- unless been... they, unless they took the surname of amidala yeah but i don't 
But I still, really that feel would, like that would raise the question of okay, so okay, this former senator's got some kids. Would they dig into it? I mean, the Jedi are pretty insightful. They might even not have to dig too far to figure to put two and two together. You know. I also kind of feel like, based on some of Yoda's mannerisms, he kind of knew as well. Right. So, like, I don't think he's really that surprised by right. it. I think he's kind of aware. Well, especially but... when, when, like, you know, later in the saga, when Luke shows up on Dagobah, and, like, Yoda did not seem phased at all to meet somebody named Luke Skywalker. It didn't surprise him at all, and he immediately, and he knew, he knew that Vader was Luke's father, so he had to have known whether I mean, that... he was the, he was there when the birth happened remember mm, yeah because he so it... he instructs obi-wan to take luke to tatooine and he sends leia with that's true. bail organa to alderaan now the question is, did, and it did also he know before that point though i feel like he probably had an inkling mm. like it's kind of hard to pull something over over Yoda's eyes, like Palpatine well, was mean, able to do. They, they had Palpatine a Sith was able literally to do... right there. So. <laughs> well, yeah, but Palpatine was a master at being able to cloud all of that stuff. That's like, true. That was one of his greatest skill sets. Yeah. So, I feel like Yoda probably had an inkling. Right, but and without that influence of of Palpatine kind of manipulating things, it would have became very clear. Oh, oh, this is what's going on. Well, because it's 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 interesting because like the the old Republic Jedi. They didn't have that much of a, a, you know, they weren't that much sticks in the mud about, you know, children and, you know, personal relationships. Um, Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until, you know, the more modern Jedi where they're like, no, personal relationships are forbidden. They, they always cause trouble. And I feel like there was like some Jedi that got, you know, like his, his wife left him for, you know, some nerf herder somewhere. It's like, you know what? No, Jedi aren't allowed to have wives. Uh, it was Yoda. It if, was Yoda. If you, back, <laughs> if you look back in like the old Republic era, you know you had, I mean, literally the original Knights of the Old Republic. You had Basta Lashan mm-hmm. was the main, like the main Jedi character of that mm-hmm. of that era. You know, notwithstanding you know like Revan or right. um, you know the, the, those guys. But uh, if you look at the uh, the old Republic MMO. Mm-hmm the main, like, female Jedi character, like, NPC, is Satil Shan, mm-hmm. who is Basta, Bastila's, like, great-granddaughter or something yeah. like that. So it even shows so it's that very that obvious. Then, so, I mean, that, yeah, it's that, very that, obvious she had children. So, I mean, that, that raises the question. Would there have been somebody on the Jedi Council who would have said, well, you know, the old ways say that this is okay? I mean, because, like, Yoda, given, Yoda, like, given like, like Yoda, as an example had been a Jedi for hundreds of years at that point. 800 years? Yeah. 900 years? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, because you look at, like, uh, like Grogu as an example. He's well, canonically, what was it, 45 right around there, give or take? Uh, a little over 50. Okay, a little over because 50. They mention, yeah, because they mention uh, that the, the target is, you know, 50 years old or something That's like right. that. And then... So you figure, in theory, Yoda probably would have started training, you know, we'll, we'll even be generous and say he started training at 100. You know, yeah. we'll make him a little older than Grogu. That would still be 800 years of being a Jedi. <laughs> so, I mean, Yoda I mean, was he probably around it. when they made that change. You know, or right. at least I mean, Yoda, a pretty recent change. Right. Yoda even says in Return of the Jedi, uh, something along the line, what was it, uh, 900, you know, 900 years old, uh, you uh, look as good at 900 years old, you will not, or something yeah, exactly, like that. Exactly, exactly. Um so, I mean, if I don't know canonically when the Jedi made that change, but, I mean, that would have been something that for Yoda would have been, at least in, in recent memory, if not happened during his life. So, I mean, if they see that, that Anakin is still able to, to balance these things, and given, you know, what he had done to stop the Sith, they might have said, okay, well... I feel like there's enough. I feel like there is enough voice of reason on the council that right. probably would. I mean, you're going to have your some of your hardliners. I feel like um, Master Kiata Mundi would probably have oh, been yeah. one of the hardliners. Oh yeah. But I. But I mean, you have Yoda, who is the wisest of the Jedi on the council. He's the Grand Master. Yep. You have Obi Wan, who's on the council. 
Mm -hmm. You have Mace Windu, who I feel like would probably cast his vote in favor of Anakin after he helped him defeat the... We know where his loyalties lie. Correct. I feel like he would really, like, he would cast his vote in favor. He would probably not be happy about it. Like, he would, like, he would be pissed as a mother about (laughs) it. Shout out to Samuel. Oh, exactly. I I, um, want, I would want Mace Windu to say that in that in that council. Right. What, I'm I, sick I, of all these mother <laughs> Sith in my mother universe. Now, like a thought that I just thought uh, also during this, Order sixty six would have never happened. Correct. So there would have been a lot more Jedi. Yeah. No. I mean, well, and you you'd, because you'd it, see because, uh, 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 who was uh, it? The... You'd see uh, Caleb Doom, who we know is Kane and Jarrus later on. Mm-hmm. Would have continued his training and became, you know, a Jedi Knight at the least, a full fledged Jedi Knight at least, right. if not master. But he would have also never met Ezra. Correct. Well, Ezra's parents also, Ezra probably would have never gone down that path because right. Ezra's parents never would have been taken by the Empire. Exactly. Now, there's not to say that there's not some, there wouldn't be some other despot that, you know, comes into power because if we go canonically at that point, um, uh, Darth Tyrannus, or, or uh, Darth Tyrannus, uh, also known as uh, Christopher Lee, uh, Dooku. Crap, uh, Count Dooku, mm-hmm. he's dead. Yep. Palpatine would be dead. Yep. Canonically, though, Maul would still be around. Maul would be alive. Mm-hmm. However, the only reason that Maul was brought out of his insanity was because of um, Savage Vent- uh, Savage. Mm-hmm. Um, his, you know, brother that the the Night Order, uh, or yep. the the Night Sisters, whatever the hell they're called, uh, created, and they really only created him to get, like, back at the Sith. So, v- Ventress was a different character. That was the bald chick, wasn't it? Ventress, yeah. Sorry, Savage, Savage Opress. That, that I was, was gonna it. say, like, I'm like, wait, that name isn't. Yeah. I'm getting two Ventress different characters was, here. Ventress actually was. Ventress was one of the the Dathomir uh, mm-hmm. Night Sisters. Yep. But she. Probably would have gone off and done something else well, after say, they're, they're, Dooku's defeat. Because at that point, she wasn't in his service anymore either. Like she was just a she was just a merc. Yeah. So. With, um, with well, gone, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess Savage would have been created still, mm-hmm. um, at that point, and he probably still would have gone after Maul. But I mean, Maul, I guess would it could have still been a protagonist at that point. Yeah. But I feel like with with as many Jedi as there are in the universe. It would have been a point, hard fought he, battle for him. Yeah, I mean, his his whole thing was you know subterfuge and well, I mean, working he, from the shadows and manipulation. He he did a lot of stuff during the Clone Wars, but with the Clone Wars, you know, be you know winding down at that point. I mean, yeah, there, there were still a few remnants of the Empire around. I mean, I, I think that uh, Maul probably would have. Uh, his his venture with uh, making like a criminal organization probably would have gone a little longer than what it did. He still would have obviously held that that grudge against Obi Wan, and I imagine they still would have eventually had that fight. Because I mean, Maul's not a he's not dumb by any stretch of the imagination. He's a very very intelligent character. Um, right. He probably still would have found a way, you know, through his connections and whatnot, to know that okay, Obi Wan's going on this humanitarian mission with just one other Jedi probably his new padawan um because eventually he would have taken on you know another padawan once things got back to normal and i feel like he still would have had that fight with maul yeah probably i mean maul Maul probably would have dogged him throughout the universe but i feel like anakin probably would have been pretty nearby right to help and because they Um, they were brothers you know Right. The the other aspect of this that we haven't even touched is how the clone wars would have played out at that point yeah which, without Palpatine, there's no one really leading the Separatists, because all three Separatist leaders at that point were dead. Yeah. Uh, would have been dead. Dooku was, died at the beginning of the first movie. Um, Grievous, who was the general, you know, the, the leader of the army, dies by Obi-Wan's hand at the, right around the same time that Palpatine would have died. Yeah. So, at that point, there was effectively no major leadership in the, in the Separatists anymore, other than the individual leaders. I feel like, at that point, the the Jedi would have figured out what was going on. Mm-hmm. They would have been able to uncover the secrets and then likely start peace negotiations with the Separatists. Right. And, because the Separatist you know, command structure would just tumble at that point. They'd yes, be, they'd because be as chaos. we... 
Correct, because as we know, they're all... All of the Separatist leaders are effectively useless without Sidious uh, right. telling them what to do. I mean, Newt Gunray and the, the Trade Federation... The, Is that uh, illegal? Wat, right. Wat Tambor and the, you know, and, and the, the, the banking clan and all of them, uh, the techno... Uh, the, the uh, Techno Federation, I think, is was Watt Tambor's um, or, or the, group. Te- techno something, I don't know. Yeah, it was the yeah the yeah something like that. The anyway, technocratic um, dance rave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I think the I think you would have actually, in reality, on a galactic level, you would have seen peace return. There, it would have taken a while. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's likely going to be some negotiation that has to happen. Uh, you know, maybe some of the separatist states would be able to remain separatist and just understanding that, you know, that they're you know, they're not privy to republic aid or, mm-hmm. you know, republic this and that. Right. Uh, and so, I mean, there's the the galaxy probably would have gotten back to normal. A new big bad Sith probably would have popped up, but at that point, at that point, you kind of go back to, to how the old Republic was, where there's just there are countless Jedi and more every day. So I mean, they they do nothing but just keep building up their numbers. Yeah. So it would have been, um, been an interesting return to, like I said, very similar to how the the old Republic or even the High Republic was. Yeah. That that's yeah. A, that's a story I actually like to see. You know, if if Palpatine. Again, this is all going off the assumption that Palpatine had not started his plans yet. You know, that he foresaw, you know, or that, you know, he didn't foresee this, I should say. If you if you go by the go by the new canon, so like, you know, the 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 JJ trilogy mm-hmm. and the books that are associated to that, um Palpatine didn't really start his he didn't start his efforts into cloning himself until he was actually in power in the Empire. Okay. Um, because he was still working on, obviously, creating the Empire. Right, right yeah. So it, it was it was much hard, would have been much harder for him to hide, uh, you know, some of the stuff that he did. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the, the cloning stuff, you know, the planet, it was in, uh, I, I read an article recently, actually, that it was actually in his Twilight years uh, uh, in the Empire that, he started to really worry about his mortality. Mm-hmm. And so then he and the, the whatever his Sith fanatics yeah, or the cultists group were, whatever, yeah. yeah, the cultist went to Exegol and started the cloning, you know, started the, the cloning research and stuff like that. Hmm. I mean, it was still, it was still several years before the end of the empire. Right. Yeah. Um, or I can't remember what the, the calendar is at that point. It's, it's why it's, um, YBY, I think, or, or uh, BBY, year, bo- BBY, yeah, yep. before before Yavin or something like that. Yeah, before um, the Battle of Yavin. Yep. Yeah, BBY, before the Battle of Yavin, um, and then yeah. So anyway, the calendar was... would have been different because there was no Battle of Yavin. <laughs> Correct. Uh, there would there would never have been that. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Kind of an interesting. Well, I was gonna say, uh, and like even farther down the road. Um, Han and Leia would have never met. Probably not, because yeah. Han never would. Have, I mean, Han never would have met Chewbacca either, because yeah. he met Chewbacca when he was an Imperial soldier. Yeah. And uh, if there was no know, Empire, right? I mean, there was no Empire to oppress the Wookiees and enslave them. Right. Uh, I mean, there probably might have been still, you know, Trandoshan slave trading and things yeah. like that, but that was more of a niche thing. Like, yeah. Under the under the Republic, it was kind of a black market thing. in In the Empire, it was like, oh, cool, yeah, give us give us more Wookiee slaves. Right. For the Republic, it was it was an illegal act, but it was it was a, like you said, a black market thing. That probably still would have been going on. So Chewie probably would have ended up as a slave somewhere. I feel like what also with the sheer number of clone troopers and and armaments that were available. The Republic probably could have done a pretty bang-up job of trying to curb oh, that's galactic true. crime. That's true, because like, yeah. Like, and even if you formed a, even if you formed an alliance with the the separatists and got you know got them to post battle droids to, you know, help patrol and things like that. Right. You know, like put a, you could have one on like police duty effectively. Correct. I mean, you could have easily have. 
You mean you send in? I mean, battle droids are they, they at least in the Clone Wars they kind of give them semi sentience to make them kind of funny and whatnot. But I mean, right. they're soulless, unthinking machines. Um, they, uh, I mean, you could have used battle droids and whatnot as shock expendable shock troopers. Oh, then, absolutely. You know, for to battle, you know, the gangs and things like that. And so you you could have done a pretty damn good job of wiping out organized crime. That's true. Now there's still going to be this stuff with the huts. Yeah, they're kind of hard, but they're also. The outer rim systems are definitely a lot harder yeah. to control. Because they're, they're even, so far out they even, there. Right, they even say that. But, again, if you have the might, combined might of the the Grand, Repub Grand Army of the Republic and the Separatist Army, you probably could have done a pretty bang-up job of p right. better patrolling and controlling those. I mean, even if you just had you know the clone army, even that's, that, that was a huge bolster to their numbers. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and if, if they kept an alliance with Camino, they could, in theory, have a whole new breed of or a batch of clones every so often, and they may have even use somebody else as a different template for the clones. You know, like, well, we can't really use a bounty hunter. I mean, yeah, he's a really great fighter, but is there somebody else that we can use? You know, they may have used, you know, maybe even one of their other Mandalorian allies. You know, or a Jedi. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think the the Jedi would consider that unnatural. <laughs> something 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 dark side <laughs> exactly anyway anyway so um i kind of feel like we we beat this horse to death oh yeah let's move uh, on to a new I, horse right exactly so uh, so going from one series of movies to a different series of movies I, I like how you and i like we didn't we didn't plan this we kept our what if separate from each other um sure. so this is talking about the mcu now okay what if Cap would have stayed frozen? What if they would never would have found him? How would things have played out differently? Ooh. Because he's kind of a, a central figure to a lot of this stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, Cap was kind of the driving force of really bringing the Avengers together. Because hmm. um, they didn't really have anybody who was leader material. I mean, maybe, maybe Thor, and even that's a big maybe, because he did lead armies, but... That's he was still, he was still also he was still also a bit of an egotist yeah in like he made like he found humility in the first Thor yeah which is what allowed him to gain his powers back but mm -hmm. he was still full of himself as yeah. evidenced in um, in uh, Ragnarok when he you know just like straight up attacks Surtur's realm right <laughs> um, you know it there's there's definitely ego there yeah. so. I feel like, especially with his the 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 bickering that he and Thor, uh, and Hulk do, yeah, um, he would they they wouldn't make him leader even if he tried to. Be like, no, nah, we're we're not following this guy. Um, so yeah, Hulk, they're not gonna let Hulk lead, lead anything, right? Um, I mean, Stark. And Tony's not really a leader. Like yeah. he's not really leader material. Like he's a. He's more of like the free agent. Uh... He's he's a manager, not a leader. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. If we want, to, yeah. Um, he yeah he he lacks the the ability to inspire people yeah. like Tony does, or like, I'm sorry, like uh, Cap does. Yeah. He's he can't he can't he doesn't have the capacity to be a symbol. Yeah. Um, which if you go back to i think it was civil war where uh steve makes the comment that like you know you're not willing to make the big sacrifices well yeah because tony's a bit of a narcissist yeah like i, like I, I think he, that was the first avengers might have been i, think, I, yeah. I can't remember yeah, i think they were, they were on the helicarrier i think yeah possibly yeah i can't i can't quite remember um, there, these movies have been being made for years now <laughs> correct uh so um yeah, it's without Cap, there really probably wouldn't have been an Avengers, and without Cap, there wouldn't have been a Falcon, obviously. Right. Um, because he's the one that kind of recruits Sam. Right. Um, Winter Soldier. Without... I mean, B Bucky would still be running around as Winter Soldier. Right. Tony would have never found out, in theory, that Bucky is the one that actually did kill his parents. So the, the Starks still would have died, right? I mean that that would that's that was during the time period where Cap was still frozen anyway. 
Yeah, they're, um... There's going to be a lot of stuff that, that doesn't happen. So, again, the, the whole Winter Soldier thing, there would be no Falcon. Um, I would probably venture that Black Widow wouldn't have had a lot of her redemption or character growth. Yeah, because a lot of that was her interaction with Cap. Right. I mean, there wouldn't have been... Uh, the, the uh, you know Wanda wouldn't have been Wanda being as part of the team. I mean, in reality, there may not even have been an Ultron. Um, it's yeah. it depends on how deep down that cascade of events you want to go. Right. Well, I mean, like starting at the beginning. I mean, Fury had the plan for Avengers. Like if you look at it canonically, Fury had the idea for the Avengers long before Cap was unthawed. So I mean, we can even we can assume that he was working on something, you know, at least in that vein, unbeknownst to him that you know Cap was going to be coming back. So I mean, that was uh, in Captain Marvel. So that would have been in, like the eighties. So I mean, if we fast yeah, forward, so I mean, it's it's a possibility that he that he could have tried to get Carol Danvers to lead the Avengers. That's I, true. I don't feel like it would have worked well because she's also got a bit of an ego about her and she right. definitely has, like, conflicting personalities with Tony. Yeah. So, I mean... Like, and, and she's her, got she's got her whole dealing with everything out there. Yes, Earth is a planet. Yes, I mean, if, if push came to shove, she's shown that she will come back to protect it. But she's right, got I mean, it's her home planet. She's an Earthling. I mean, yeah. she is an Earthling. Yeah. But um, she's got everything out there she's dealing with, you know? Right. Um, and it kind of, again, it depends on, like, that cascading thing. Yeah. Like, um... I mean, uh, l l let's assume that... The, 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 uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy wouldn't have been affected because they didn't have yeah. any interaction with Cap, as far as, you know, as far as I know. If we talk about MCU, at least. Yeah. They didn't have any interaction with Cap until Infinity War. Yeah. And even then, they actually didn't even interact with Cap in Infinity War at all. Because they only yeah. interacted with Tony. Because Tony was the one that was out in space. Yeah. Cap was still back on Earth trying to hide the the Infinity Stones that were on Earth. Right, so like, so Cap would have... Yeah, because Cap was on Earth. So l l let's assume that the Avengers still would have formed sans Captain America. I think that yep. in the fight for New York, without somebody there to inspire them and lead them, and them just each doing their own individual thing, claiming to be a group, I think, given the circumstances, especially with it being a space threat, I think Fury would have used, you know, his pager for Captain Marvel sooner than what he originally did. But it's a matter of where was she at that point? Would she have been close enough to get there and make a difference before you know stuff got really bad before you know the all you know the the armies that loki was bringing were you know you know good to go on taking over everything yeah i mean well one, and they, they, actually they that launched... actually begs it that, that does beg a question to me is like how the hell did she make it to earth when thanos attacked in endgame right like because he, he was there for 20 minutes right <laughs> like one how did she know and two like where the hell was she? Like, does she have the ability to just, you know, use that whatever, like, hexagon space warp stuff on her own? Can she just, like, I mean, does she maybe. have, like, a personal hyperdrive she can do? I mean, Who knows? admittedly powered by an infinity stone, so, right. yeah. And isn't I mean, it the space it's, stone? It's the, spa it's the space stone, so, I mean, in theory, she might have that. But, um... Yeah, I mean, they don't really explore that. Maybe yeah. they'll explore that in the next... Captain Marvel. Which or the, I'm looking for the Marvels. Too. Yeah, I'm looking the forward Marvel. to that one. Um, yeah, as much as uh, as much as Camilla Khan is kind of like a, you know, a B list character. She, like, she, she's a fan favorite, though. Yeah, and they really elevated her. Re Zoom me o'clock again. <laughs> uh, they really elevated her um, in recent comic series. Oh, and absolutely. Obviously, she was a big part of Square Enix's relatively failed Avengers game. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's the main character for most of the game. Yeah. But um, she's an interesting character. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and it's um, if we want to be, you know, you know, racially inclusive and things like that, it's it's interesting that it's. I think it's fantastic that they chose a character of her ethnicity. Oh, to, absolutely. Because I mean, yeah, um, you don't really. There's not a whole lot of other characters. I mean, there's a few, obviously, but none who, at least at this point, are as prominent as she is. Right. You know. But yep. um, I, I still think that during the battle for New, for New York. I still think Tony would have tried to divert that nuke because, I mean, he's not just going to sit by and let, you know, all of New York get nuked. But I still think the Avengers, as they would stand without Cap, would just be, it'd, it'd be throwing, you know, a pack, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, roosters into a pen and going, all right, follow orders. It's not going to happen. Um yeah, they're, you know, they, they're, they're going to take, like, you know, cues here and there from Fury, but, I mean, Cap, while Fury knows how to, you know, he knows how to direct things as far as Sutterfuge goes, Cap knew, Cap was a field tactician. He knew how yeah, to... Yeah, I mean, he was, a, he, knew how to he was a soldier. A, yes, exactly. He knew how to lead a group of, what are effectively soldiers in the battlefield. So, I mean, without that, the they'd all just be off, like, Black Widow and Hawkeye. They're soldiers, they're trained, I mean, they're assassins. Um, they would follow Fury's orders on what to do. I, right. I think they would have been okay. Hulk would have just been off doing his Hulk thing. Uh, Thor would have probably been out there trying to one-up Hulk, because that's what he does. So less about the battle and more about, you know, winning against the green guy. Uh, Iron Man would have just been doing whatever he wanted to do at that point. I mean, it would have been it would have been chaos. Cap was the one. Shawarma? that... Yeah, he shawarma, right? Yeah. He would have, he would have gotten a shawarma. I mean, afterwards, of course. Um, oh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it would it would have just been chaos. Even if they managed to somehow pull it together with you know superhero plot armor, it, it would not have been nearly as as clean as it was in the movie. It would have just been it would have been chaos. Yeah, I would. I would generally agree with that in all, in, in all reality. I mean, there's just... Again, we've we've had three for three at this point of talking about central characters that are the glue yeah. that kind of holds their respective groups together. Right. Um, Cap is the the voice of reason, and he has the 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 charisma or the the, the spirit of of teamwork and and whatnot, and I mean, Cap's kind of the reason that Wakanda was even kind of involved in stuff. Yeah. You know, like... Well, I mean, because, like, I think, like, even going with that, without Cap there to kind of safeguard Bucky, and without everybody else's ties to Cap, you know, T'Challa would have just taken Bucky back to Wakanda for trial, and that would have been the end of that. Yeah, I mean the other th the other component being is again you know cascading effects. If there was no cap, there probably wouldn't have been a reason for an Ultron. Although there could have there could have still been. Yeah. If there was no Ultron, then there's no Sokovia. Right. If there's no Sokovia, then there's no Sokovia Accords. And then there's no Civil War. There, if there's no Sokovia, there's also no need for a Zemo. There's no like. You don't have. You're you kind of like negate a good. Good portion of, not only villains but just like motivations for people. Right. That's so, true. I mean, Th Thanos probably still would have been doing what Thanos does. Correct. And uh, he probably would have been even more successful. I mean. Yeah, I mean, because in reality, it's. Cap, who convinces Tony to help them, right? Bring you know, help them in their the Infinity Stone, the time heist. Yep, I think that's what they called it, right? The it was the time heist. The time heist. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's what the, Ant Man called it anyway. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So he's the one that really convinces them to do the time heist. Right. So. So I mean, yeah. without him there to kind of tie the Avengers together. I don't think any of the others really would have care, you know, been able to talk Tony into it because Tony was, he was pretty sad. It's like, look, I've I've got my wife, I've got my daughter, I I'm relatively happy. I can't give up, every, you know. He even says that I can't give up everything I've done 
to do this. So right. I, I don't think that I don't think they would have been as close of a team, even if Tony, even if it still ate at him. Like, could I really, really solve time travel? Even if he still went through with it, he wasn't close. He wouldn't have been close enough to any of the other Avengers without that glue of Captain America to then show up and go, "Hey guys, I figured out how to do it." Right. Well, the other side of things is there. There, I don't think there would have been a Scott Lang involved in the first place because Scott was recruited. You know, to help Cap during Civil War. Yeah, so he he would have just been doing <sighs> Ant Man stuff solo, separate from the Avengers. Right. Which also would have, again probably have had that cascading effect of he wouldn't have hope hooked up with Hope Van Dyne. You know, he wouldn't have gotten stuck in the time the the time loop or whatever it was the time right. machine, and well, ergo I mean, been he... able to to avoid. Thanos's um, snap. I mean, so. he, he might still have because I mean, the Ant Man movies, while they are connected to the, the MCU on a large scale, those those two films you can pretty much watch as as separate things, and there's not a whole lot of other stuff that really affects it up until like they go to a well, because he went to Avengers Campus to, in the first film to take some tech there probably wouldn't have been an Avengers campus. So they would have had to get that tech elsewhere. And even assuming they got that tech elsewhere, it wasn't up until the Thanos snap that the Ant-Man movies were really super involved in the MCU. I mean, he showed up for the Civil War fight, but he wouldn't have been on house arrest because there wouldn't have more than likely been the Sokovia Accords. So he would have been able to spend more time with his daughter and whatnot. And probably actually would have done... I think he would have done more had there not been a cap. Because he wouldn't have been on house arrest for, a, you know, a year or whatever it was. He would have it been depends. able to, to because... do what he wanted and go out and be Ant-Man. Go help, you know, uh, Hank Pym. And do it kind of depends because, again, Scott's... He suffers from the, the Marvel superhero thing where he's got a bit of an ego. Like, he's... He's not, you know, the goody two shoes like Cap is. Right. Um, no one. No, is. Cap is. Cap is the golden boy. Let's mm -hmm. let's admit, like yep. he's, you know, the altruistic one. Mm -hmm. Everybody else has a character flaw, which again, I think I've mentioned this before, but it's one of my one of the things that I absolutely love about the Marvel universe is that their characters are flawed. Yeah. They're human, mm -hmm. well, the ones that are actually human. Yeah. Um, but they have, <laughs> you know, human elements to them. They have flaws to them. The original, uh, before the New Fifty Two, the original, the DC characters were just like, eh. right? Like they didn't, like they didn't really have much. I mean, flaw or you, personality you, yeah, like, like you, it was difficult to connect to them like okay yeah batman was dark and brooding but he still never killed anybody until batfleck came along and and he never killed he, anybody, he never but... didn't not kill anybody correct oh no I, did, I didn't kill him the the grenade that i threw him on top of <laughs> exactly <killed him. laughs> I, I didn't kill him it was the batmobile you know batmobile crashing into there i didn't kill their, uh, i didn't kill him it was the loss of blood Exactly. It wasn't me. I mean, uh, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, Marvel, all, I mean, hell, I mean, back in the 90s, Marvel did an entire series, like, comic book series about Tony Stark having alcoholism. Yeah, Demon in a Bottle. Yep. One of, one Demon of the... in a Bottle. For Christ's sake, it was one of the best Tony yes, Stark arcs yes, ever. It was. Because it truly explored the human side of a superhero. Mm -hmm. Like, these people have flaws. Like, yeah. Cap is not even squeaky clean. Like, he has issues. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm soapboxing at this point. But, um, <laughs> y anyway, so. Yeah, well, Cap, um, he's, without Cap, we'd have a vastly different Marvel universe. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So yeah. I was say, I, 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 we're about at time, but I have one quick one to bring up for you. Okay. Okay. What if you a bull made good movies? <laughs> I had to get oh, I had to get one in. I had to get one in. All right. So uh, I, I I I kid you not. The very last one on my list, folks. What if you a bull didn't suck? <laughs> so it worked out perfectly. To... 
I was going to bring that one up at the end of this. Uh, so, um, this proves to everyone that the stupid link is in fact alive, and Tim and I are really just brothers from another mother. It's um, true. It's true. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. But, if by if the we way, actually oh, actually exploring exploring that particular concept. That's a whole episode. It is, but I'm going to touch on it anyway. Okay. If UA Bowl actually didn't suck and could make good movies, we might actually have video game based movies that aren't rated like crap. Yeah. But because let's admit, before Sonic the Hedgehog, the highest rated video game movie was Rampage at, I believe, a 65% yeah, tomato, right, right uh, tomatometer score. Um, so it was still considered, like, Decent. okay? It was considered okay, but it wasn't, like... Sonic the Hedgehog was the one that actually elevated video game movies to a, a tolerable, oh, you yeah. know, a tolerable oh, level. Yeah. yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Um, which, I will say this, thank God the producers and director of that movie listened to fan feedback when they yes. revealed Sonic the Hedgehog yes. and changed his character. Because that char original character design was nightmare fuel. Yeah, it was, it was not good. It was not It good. was horrifying. Anyway, so if you a bowl actually could create decent movies, and Tim's got his finger on the counter. Yes, I do. Uh, which, what are we at, Tim? 41! Ding ding! <laughs> awesome. So, if you look at the if you look at the properties that he has that he had license to, um, he had properties to Blood Rain, mm -hmm. which was is a fantastic video game series. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's a great video game series. Terrible, terrible movies, thanks to Ewe Bowl. Forty two. <laughs> um, so those actually could have been like really awesome Blade level. Oh. If not better than Blade level vampire movies. Oh yeah. Uh, and the, and the, there was three of them: there, Blood Rain, Blood Rain Deliverance, Blood Rain. I believe the Third Reich. Yeah. Uh, Reich. Um, then there was also uh, he had license for the Far Cry series. Oh yeah, which is a fantastic game series. Yes, it is. And the next one is coming out soon, isn't it? Or Far Cry 6? Fall, I think. I think. Fall with Giancarlo Esposito yes, as yeah. the main villain. Yes. So if you don't know Giancarlo Esposito, he plays Gus Fring in Breaking Bad, as well as uh, other characters. And he is a fantastically evil actor. Uh, yes. For those of you that are nerdy, he plays uh, 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 Moff Gideon. I was going to say, in, come on, uh, man. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say Darth Gideon. I'm like, no, that's not right. Darth Even though he's Gideon. got like, a weird like chest piece thing like right. Vader does. Um, Moff Gideon uh, in the Mandalorian series. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else does he have? Uh, House of the Dead, which was a video game series from back in the day. Not exactly. I mean, it was an arcade game. Yeah, I mean, it, like, it was fun. It was fun, but I mean, it was an arcade game. Uh, um, a Dungeon Siege. Dungeon Siege movie, if you remember, in the name of the king, it actually yep. starred Jason Statham. Yep. Um, but he had the Dungeon Siege series. Uh, Postal, that was a video oh, game series. Yeah, I forgot about Postal. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, Postal was another one of those uh, series that he had that would have been fantastic. Um, let's see, what else is under his. Filmography. Well, I mean, that's here. just assuming the films he made were good. If he made good films, he may have gotten access to other game licenses, too. Correct. Maybe he would have gotten a hold of a Super Mario license. Maybe. Or a Legend of Zelda license. I mean, let's, let's all... I mean, it's a pretty well-known fact, folks, that... Ever since the travesty that was the 1993 Super Mario movie, Nintendo has been very recalcitrant about giving out their licenses yeah. for movies. Like, yeah. it was just... That yeah. said, they are making another Super Mario Brothers movie. It is going to be an animated feature. Which and I'm okay with. I am okay with. Um, which, by the way, Tim, did you know this? The original voice actor for Super Mario... Passed yeah. away earlier this year. I, I, it I was just largely, saw that. yeah, it was largely unpublicized. Mm -hmm. um, I he just passed read away that today, in January. Actually, yeah, yeah, he passed away in January. 
Um, it has largely gone unknown until recently when it kind of came out in the media. That's how I found out about it was Google was nice enough to let me know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, the original um, voice for Super Mario from the, the cartoon show yes. shows, uh, did, did the voice for Super Mario Brothers 3 and uh, Super Mario World. Yep. Uh, it has re- uh, passed away this year. So, yeah. um, you know, we, we thank you for our childhood. Yeah. Because uh, you, were, you, were, you were our Mario. Of course, now we have another another guy that does a really bang up job tomorrow oh, yeah. too well so, it's, it's um, anyway w- w- when i first saw that article that was my first thought was oh, no because i, I thought you're talking about charles martinet i'm like mario luigi waluigi wario i'm like yep he, but then i'm like oh oh it was the original voice actor I'm like oh oh it was the original voice actor oh. yeah it was kind of like when uh it, it was sad you know yeah kind of like when lou albano passed away like yeah. everyone was like well, everybody that knew about it was like, no. Nah. Right. Um, yo, you Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, 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 yeah, that, that is a famous clip on YouTube if you haven't seen it yet. I wish this fly would go away. Um, yeah, so um, back to our homeboy, UA Bowl. <laughs> uh, if he made good movies, he could have potentially gotten many other series and really define like set the standard Infin- for infinity video War, infinity war directed by you a bowl oh man mm. star wars episode seven directed by you a bowl i don't know i mean he's kind of got a he's kind of got a niche uh, you know he's he, then again he might have a niche because he he's been relegated to yeah. said niche uh being able to get a hold of cheap video game titles and doing movies about nazis um because that's really a lot of like most of his filmography is and, like and Nazis. Ron, and Ron Howard's younger brother or older brother. Younger? I don't actually I don't remember slash no. Right. Um Ron Howard's there is brother. still correct. There is still a movie in his filmography that I that we need to see, which is called Blubberella, which we I, have spoken about before. Yeah. Like I, um, I, I need to find a copy of it just to see the train wreck. We, just, yeah. we we need to find it. Okay, we need to find one before we hit fifty on the counter. And I'm call, oh. I'm calling it now, which we only have oh. five to go. Oh 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 my! I I think. Hold on, hold on, folks, hold on, hold on. Uh, is it? Oh my God, it is. Uh, Timothy, it yes. is available on Amazon Prime. It's a Prime film. It is, it is on Amazon Prime. Well, it's actually on IMDb TV, which is part of Prime, so you can watch it free with ads. But it is it is available on Prime for okay. you to watch. Okay. To watch. When we hit 50 on that counter, I am calling it now, folks. When we hit 50 on that counter, the episode immediately following that will be a You a Bowl, we only have four, special, <laughs> with our review of his greatest film, Blubberella. In fact... I'm going to I'm going to one up us Tim. Uh-oh. I'm going to I'm going to volunteer us for a live reaction video. Oh, It'll be recorded. Yes. It'll be recorded. But Tim and I will watch the video together yeah. either through video or in person, yep. whatever it is. We will watch it together and we will record our reactions. <laughs> and this is going to wind up being a mystery science theater travesty. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Because let's we, do it. We know. <laughs> and we will make that our episode for that week. It will be the special. Uh, and we don't want to necessarily say his name any yes. for this episode because that would put really us one more. <laughs> That puts us one more closer to having to watch that train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So, um... We're gonna do this. We we have explored uh, different what-if scenarios. I don't know about you, Tim, but I've got a few more on my list mm-hmm. that we could always talk about oh, at yeah. a later time. And in fact, I still have my original uh, versus list sitting I have, over I have on been my update, desk. I've been updating mine as well. Yep, I still have mine, and I'm going to file away my what if list. Yeah, <laughs> for those of you not watching video, I'm shaking my piece of paper <laughs> angrily in front of the camera. Uh, I will file this list away so that we can bring it up again in the future and use it for a future episode. Absolutely. Maybe we will have our maybe we will have the reoccurring character of my brother <laughs> back on the podcast for that. I was tempted to actually uh, call him for this, but I figured I'd leave him alone for today. There you go. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, um, 
I think that's going to about do it for us. Oh, yeah. We're probably right around at time. Um, we, uh, Tim watches the clock more than I do. I don't actually yeah. know how long this episode has taken. So, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, so what if... What if we were popular? <laughs> what if we What if we got people to shill for them? You know? Uh, you never know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of shilling, uh, it's time to do our <laughs> uh, usual end of episode uh, shout-outs to our uh, providers and carriers and uh, loving friends uh, and family out there who support us uh, by basically not walking in and interrupting us while we're doing the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so thank you to our friends and family, uh, all of our viewers out there, loyal, new, and otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, people that maybe tune into us just because you want to laugh at a couple of nerds uh, just doing stuff. Your your views and listens still count. So na, 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 na. <laughs> uh, so um, yes, we you can find our podcast uh, hosted on Anchor.fm, which also branches out to uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and several other uh, podcasting platforms. You can also catch us on our live, uh, not live, but our recorded videos on YouTube, uh, where you get to see us being giant dorks, not that anybody wants to look at us, um, really. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, then... Um, I kind of forgot where I'm going. Oh, yes, social media. Uh, Twitter, at Non Sequitur Nerd. Uh, and also catch us on Facebook. Uh, those are the two uh, forms of social media that we update the most. The website hasn't been touched in months. It's probably dead <laughs> yeah. at this point, but we still own the domain, and we're going to continue at least owning it. So yep. um, for those of you out there who are trying to copy Non Sequitur Nerd, we know who you are. And we're sorry. Um, <laughs> correct. Um uh, so, uh, thank you for joining us uh, today. It's, uh, as always, been a lot of fun for us, Absolutely. which is why we do this, because yep. we have a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. So, um, I think that'll do it for today. Sounds so, about right. Signing off with Non Sequitur Nerds, uh, I'm Ian. And I'm Tim. Aww. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>